Good morning from an absolutely gorgeous day here in Kyoto, Japan. No clouds in the sky, bright blue skies, easily the nicest weather I've had since I've been in this country. So Kyoto is known for visiting Shinto and Buddhist shrines. There are over 1,600 Buddhist temples and over 400 Shinto shrines in Kyoto. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna temple hop, we're gonna shrine hop, and we're gonna see some of these amazing structures, some of which are dating to like the eighth or ninth century CE. Now, Kyoto is old world Japan in a nutshell. While the rest of Japan has adopted modernity with abandon, Kyoto has maintained a lot of its traditional roots and there's no better way of exploring that than seeing these temples and shrines. These are the things, I love doing these things when I travel, they are just, relics of the past of a different age and I love seeing them so this has been a big draw for me coming to this part of Japan and so I want to take you guys along with me show you these structures today and um, yeah we'll see what we can find it's a long walk from where I'm at now all the way up towards the north end of the city along this mountain range our walking in this part of the city there's a lot of green space and so it's a nice kind of like when you think of these Shinto shrines and temples in Japan and you have this picture in your mind of like these beautiful sh shrines and temples like in the woods, that's kind of this part of Kyoto. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, and I'm just like so thrilled that we have this type of weather because it's been cloudy and rainy the whole time I've been in Japan. So this is like so, so nice. So the way that you get to some of these structures is you take the Tozai subway line to Kiji Station, which is definitely not pronounced that way, but take exit one out of the subway, make a right, and you'll see this really gorgeous stone archway with this beautiful Japanese script. Through the tunnel. Yeah, and just like that, you're pretty much on your way. So, I think it's a short walk to the first temple down this road. Let's go. technically here in Japan in this part of Japan um, I'm kind of in like the south or central west portion of the country and it's very early autumn peak fall foliage here is in like late November possibly even early December but you can still see that there's some color change starting to come through the two seasons I think that people 
associate most with Japan are spring when the cherry blossoms bloom and fall when you get the color change which makes the viewing of a lot of these temples and shrines just absolutely magnificent. I'm sure most people have seen, you know, images of Japanese temples set it in a background of colorful autumn leaves. It's really spectacular. I don't know if I'll catch it today. It's a, like I said, it's just just starting the color change, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we'll see what it, how we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this is Kanchi Inn. And I'm just gonna preface this whole day by saying that every one of these temples and shrines is going to be mispronounced. <laughs> I don't speak any Japanese, but it's, it's, it's spelled Kanchi Inn. And this one was actually built in 1400. still working temples like there are actually monks inside right now that are praying these are not just tourist attractions these are all still working temples and shrines hey little guy Absolutely spectacular first temple, but I'm heading out of Kanchi Inn now because we have a lot more to see still. So I'm just walking up to the second temple now, which is Nenzinji. And this is a massive temple complex. There are multiple sub temples and sub shrines all in the woods around it. So I'm gonna try and find some of those as well and get away from the main temple, maybe find some of these like more secu secluded, smaller sub temples and sub shrines that are in this area too. But look at how beautiful this is, this walk up to this temple. I don't even think, I mean, this is huge, but I don't even think this is the actual temple. I don't think this is the main one. So this temple right here that I'm just about to show you, I don't believe this is Nanzin G proper. I think it's up a little bit more, but whatever it is, and I'll read about it later, I'll put the name below. It's absolutely stunning. Um, take a look at it. Here, let me go this way so you get a better view. Really nice early autumn color change in this tree here. That's gotta be one of the most beautiful structures I've ever seen in my life. Look at the size of this.
So I think the temple is up here. That structure, that big structure that I pointed out back there that we passed, I believe that's the living quarters for the monks. All right, so this is Nanzenji. And this one was built in 1264. Absolutely gorgeous temple. They're all surrounded by so much greenery too. That's the thing, like it's, there's such, I can see why like people set up temples here to practice Zen Buddhism because they are so, these sites are just so tranquil. Right, you have like sounds of rushing water in the background, birds, and just a lot of greenery. It's really, really a peaceful place. This is the second temple, and it's the second time that I've noticed that Surrounding these like central ponds, you have these moss covered hills. Well, not hills, but these little moss covered undulations in the ground. And they're just, they're so beautiful. Like it's, it's, I don't think it's manicured or maybe it is, but it, if, if it's not, it's incredible. All right, so Nanzinji was spectacular. I am now on my way, however, up this gravel path, which suddenly has no other tourists on it to try and make my way out to some of these smaller sub temples and sub shrines that are deeper in the woods and so that's where i'm gonna go now assuming i can find it let's see how we go Um, it's this tiny little pagoda right there, which I'll take you down to in a second. And this, uh, what looks like constructed waterfall, which I'm assuming is the shower for the monks that will sleep here possibly, because this is an active, like this is active, like they pray here. This is quite, this is uh, quite extraordinary. It's like super dark in here, but. I mean, it, 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 it smells like incense in there. Here's the stream that's been diverted to create that, um, what I'm pretty sure is a shower. Pretty extraordinary, like look at this. Every one of these like little rocks has been um, like constructed for prayer. See this?
That's really insane. I keep looking over my shoulder because I saw a sign down there that was like, aggressive monkeys or baboons live in this area and they will like just run up and bite you. It's probably how monkey pox started. All right, let's go back down. Okay, so far, all of these have been absolutely beautiful. And there's, I think, three more that we're gonna hit today, but right now, uh, it's getting to be about lunchtime. I'm gonna try and find something to eat. So let's go into town just a little bit and see if we can find some food. I love how small, like, everything is in Japan. Like their little dump truck and their little like crane back of the thing. Streets are tiny. All right, here's the spot. There's already a line, which is a good thing. <laughs> you know day udon. I guess I should, this is a line? Okay. Yeah, it's always a good sign when there's a line of people outside the noodle shop for lunch. I think I will do that. Yeah. Udon. Udon. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so the name of the place is Hanodi Udon, and it's a short walk up the road from Icon Do. And I had Googled this place, basically I was looking for um, good noodle shops that were in the area of all these temples in um, northern Higashiya, Higashiyama. Um, and this came up, so that's why I'm here. They have udon, they also have soba, but it's like this kind of like really cool little local joint, lots of wood. Um, yeah, and it's really, it's, it's, uh, it's actually really beautiful. I don't know if the people in here are local or tourists, but I'm definitely the only white person in here. So. And they have the menu on the wall that's all in Japanese. Yeah, so I basically got udon with proportion. Which just sounded absolutely incredible. And it is. <laughs> place now it's 12:45 is like halfway down the block that place is like super popular and understandably that was fantastic like that was so good that broth was so rich complex it was really really good so the temple we're going into now is icon do it's supposed to be a really good temple for pictures during foliage and you'll see why in a second but I can definitely see why this would be an amazing sight during fall. All of those trees up on the hill are going to be the backdrop for this temple. And so far we've only seen uh, Buddhist temples. There are also Shinto shrines 
in the uh, in this area, lots of them, and um, I just think there are more Buddhist temples here in this part of Kyoto. But we're definitely going to see at least one Shinto shrine before the day is over. Um, I don't know if I went in the right way or not. S classic Japan. Look at that. I don't know what this says. So, oh, apologize for your inconvenience. But that is so typical Japan. Like, the picture of the person they have on there is like this really nice, humble, smiling person. It's a great country, man, great country. So from down here, you can just barely see the tip of the of the top of the pagoda um, that sits on top of the temple. And we're obviously gonna get much closer, but I guess you have to like kind of hike up there a little bit. But man, this is just so gorgeous. Like, I mean, you literally couldn't have picked a better day. It's like 21 degrees right now. I mean, it is just like absolutely perfect. All right, now, this looks like shopping. Oh yeah, here. Pagoda. Yeah. I'm extremely confused by written Japanese. Basically, there are three different Japanese alphabets. One is like the traditional Japanese script that you see in like pop culture probably most people are familiar with and then there are the um uh i don't know how chinese like uh there, there's a script that's basically descended from chinese and it, it the, the characters resemble you know mandarin for example and then there's also a third script and all three of these are combined into written japanese and some of it is read from right to left, and some of it is also read from top to top down. And it's really, really confusing. Like I've seen menus that have like, some menus are left to right, and then others are top down. And like it's, it's uh... Actually, let's go back this way. It's really, really uh, interesting. It's. I think as a foreigner, it's not necessarily a super challenging language to learn if you really dedicated yourself to it, but it is extremely hard to read. I haven't even made it up to the pagoda yet because this garden that they have down here is so beautiful. And there's actually a decent amount of color change and with the sun, it's just hitting it perfectly in the late afternoon and it's like really, really beautiful. Absolutely stunning. This is like the first thing you see when you come up the steps. And I'm a bit confused if I'm being honest, because this is called a tori. And typically you would see them at the entrance to like a Shinto shrine. But this is Buddhist. Um, so that's, that's actually a little confusing to me. Maybe I guess it's both. 
By the way, I don't know if I said it or not, this is Ikan Do is the name of this temple. And um, this one is actually quite old. This is um, at least the first structures were built on this land uh, in the eighth century. Okay, let's keep going. It seems like it is a long way up. Here is the pagoda that we saw from the bottom. And I think normally you could probably go inside, but this looks closed. Yeah, that's locked. But I think the real benefit is what I'm looking at right now. Take a look at this view. That right there is all of Kyoto. Absolutely breathtaking. Wow. Okay, so I'm just walking up to a very, very popular walking path here in Kyoto, known as the Philosopher's Trail. And from what I understand, it is a wooded path that goes along the water, little canal here, that leads to a bunch of different temples and shrines. And it starts, I'm pretty sure, right here. Hey, hey, little guys. So I'm properly on the Philosopher's Trail now. This is the walking path. And um, I don't know, I, I mean, I guess it's called that because of the, you know, the number of like shrines and temples you can visit off of this trail, but um, otherwise it just looks like a walking and a biking path. This is Honin Inn. This is another temple. This is a Buddhist temple. And it's supposed to be very, very beautiful. Wow, this is set back way into the woods. I mean, this is like properly in the forest. They literally put that leaf there with these two flowers almost as a dam to create this dripping effect. That is Japan in a nutshell. This right here epitomizes this entire culture. The attention to detail, the cleanliness. Look how perfect it is. The leaf is perfectly centered. That is beautiful. So basically these are the grounds of Honin-in Temple. 
late afternoon light coming through these trees. It's really gorgeous. This building right here, back into the trees, that is the actual temple. All right, last shrine of the day. And I'm trying to get there before they close in about 20 minutes. So I'm walking backwards so the sun is facing me. It doesn't blow out the whole video. So I gotta, this is pretty far back in the woods. So I gotta take this trail up there. This is a Shinto shrine and it looks pretty epic. So it's small, it's gonna be small, but it looks cool. Let's see if we can get there before it closes. I thought I was lost in the woods for a while, but now I know I'm not. And I'll show you why in a second. I don't know if you can see it yet, but that red Tori right there signifies that I have found the shrine. This is it. Well, this is not only it, this is part of it. Let's take a walk up to the other part. Definitely not a touristy site here in Kyoto, but that's why I wanted to come to this one last. I've been with the crowds all day and it's nice to escape them for the last site. There's another Tori up here. This one is not like your traditional red. This one's made of wood. And I believe this is actually the shrine complex right here. This is awesome. This is literally just like set back in the woods. I'm the only person here. I actually think it's closed. That's the ticket office and it's closed. But it says open till 5 p.m. on Google Maps. It's 4.15. This is a common thing I've noticed in Shinto shrines. So this is a, for the spell up here. And the reason they have them is because when you go to a Shinto shrine, if you, to pray, they throw in some money, ring the bell and clap twice. I can't remember if they ring the bell first or if they clap first, but that is, um, and then you pray. Well, that continues on up into the woods. I'm not gonna go up there, but I'm gonna take some pictures real fast and then uh, probably call it a day. All right, guys, well, it's been a long day. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some information about visiting these sites in Kyoto, um, what you can expect when you come here. Um, I had a blast. It was really fun walking around and just like seeing all these sites. Like, like I said, I love doing this stuff. Every site costs like a couple dollars, anywhere from like four to 600 yen. This last one I went to is free. Um, Honan Inn was free. So it just depends on the site. They're all run differently. But uh, I'm gonna say good night now from the front of this beautiful red tori at this gorgeous Shinto shrine in the middle of the forest outside of Kyoto city. Have a good night guys. I will see you in the next one. More to come from Japan. Take care. Bye.